Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, small speakers. Over the years there's been some really, really good small speaker designs and I was thinking the other day, if I sort of made a list of all my sort of top, sort of speak, you know, my favourite speakers over the, over the decades, a lot of them would probably be small, small monitors, um, you know, from AR18s, which are sort of this sort of size, to little energy A1s, which are more down this sort of size, um, all the Roids, like the A7s and the Conistons and the Sintras, uh, even things like Boston A40s and uh, JPW P1s, one short MS tens, you know, there's a whole load of them which are were just really good, considering the size of them. Then they gave you a really clean, clear sound and just very enjoyable to listen to, really. And I know a lot of that is psychological. I know that a lot of it is to do with your sort of per perception of what something's going to sound like. A big speaker you expect a lot of, a small speaker you don't. So I know there's a certain element of that. Um, but there are sort of other things going on as well. A small cabinet is much easier to make rigid and low resonance because small small panels don't have that sort of tendency to sing along to the music. So, which is always the problem with big floor standards is that they've got to brace the cabinets to make them sort of um, well make them rigid really. Um, so they're, they're always at an advantage as far as clarity and vocal presentation goes and sort of almost imagery as well because it's all around that sort of mid band area. Um, so that's the advantage. The disadvantages of small speakers is that you really do need a big cabinet or it's easier with a big cabinet and a bigger driver to get bass extension. It doesn't mean it's impossible with a small speaker, it just means it's really hard. If you, it's, it's something that's not always very well achieved by manufacturers. Some put a sort of false hump into the bass to make them sound fuller but they don't go very deep. Um, the other way to do it is just to make them much more in, sort of much more efficient, inefficient, I suppose, uh, and that's the general way of doing it. If you want to have a, a really good linear sounding small speaker with proper extension, then you've got to drop the efficiency. Really, um, well, that brings me to the Ophidium Minimo. Probably one of my favourite small speakers. And I keep saying this, and the thing is, uh, people you'd be saying, yeah, but a couple of weeks ago you said that the Neat Petit was your favourite small speaker. I'd sort of say the Petit is a bigger speaker than these, even though it is a small stand mount. I almost need to create a new category. I mean, I'm just flashed into my head. Micro speaker. They're more of a micro speaker. I've just made that up. Um, considerably smaller than Neat Petit, considerably smaller than things like uh, Dali Menuets and you know, a lot of other speakers that are considered small. So they are, they are tiny, these. Um, not as big as the, 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 the previous, and I'll go into that in a, in, in a sec, but just, just to give you a sort of a, something to go reference-wise, LP. Very grubby looking LP, bit of New Riders of the Purple Sage, but um, just, yeah, size-wise, they're tiny, really small. Um, and like I said, the previous version, I was a bit disappointed when, I, when these were launched, which is probably 18 months-ish, maybe two years now, you know. It's taken me a while to get around to, to actually doing a review of these. Um, when they were announced, I looked at them, I thought, they look bigger. I don't know why, but they look bigger. And looking at the measurements, they're a good inch, these are a good inch taller, and an inch deeper front to back, and probably a third of an inch wider. Um, so I was a bit disappointed, really, because the, the originals were so small and took people by, really took people by surprise. The amount of demonstrations I did of the original Minima, the people who turned to you said, how are they doing that? How are they? I don't understand. Um, but actually, once I've... Had them set, set, I had set them up downstairs, I've been running them for a couple of weeks. I've sort of forgotten all that because they are a really tiny speaker and they still produce a sound, you just can't quite fathom how he's done it. Gareth, the designer, is brilliant. I mean, all the whole range are like this. They all, they all sound way bigger than they should do for the size of the cabinet. And there is some clever stuff going on in these. I'll show you the back panel in a minute, but that's kind of, I might explain it, but um, clever choice of drivers, interesting sort of system of sort of porting and all that sort of thing with them. The new versions are still using the same treble unit, so it's like about well, roughly a one inch soft dome. Always like soft dome treble units, never be that, been that into metal dome drivers to be honest. Uh, and similarly the bass driver, and now some people might see this as a back step, it isn't, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really behind Gareth on this. It's gone from a, an aluminium, a coated aluminium 90 mil cone up to a 115 mil uh, paper cone, which is again coated. I've always liked paper cone drivers, um, and I know the big 
names out there probably wouldn't go down that route because it's not a great headline. Um, you know, it's not a great thing for your marketing department to get, get the teeth into. Um, nowadays, a lot of these big brands, they love to have sort of crazy, you know, materials or, you know, made out of diamond encrusted this and, um, you know, metal this and, you know, whatever. Just, just ridiculous stuff that is, whether it has any effect on the sound probably isn't relevant. It's to do with the marketing. It's to do with um, what can we say about it that makes it seem better than all our competitors. What they should be doing is putting drivers in there that make them sound better than the competitors. And I, I, it's starting to annoy me now. It is starting, I've got a bit of a thing about, there's an awful lot of speaker manufacturers out there that are run by marketing and not, there doesn't seem to be any actual proper listening and evaluation going on before they release stuff. People like Gareth, and we could say this of Bobbitt, Neat, um, and there's, there's, there's a few out there still, still doing it old school and really care about the speakers. It's all about that. They're not trying to, pull the wool with marketing. They're, they're, they're just producing really good, honest speakers. Um, and Aphidia Minimo, definitely, that's right up there. Um, over the originals, because I was baited breath a little bit, I thought, surely he's not going to sort of manage with such a radical change, because it is quite a radical change to the design of these, even though they kind of look similar. I really hope he hasn't spoiled them. But actually, and I'd, I hadn't really thought about this until I, heard, I listened to these, the originals did have a slightly um, slightly false sound to the bass sometimes. If, if you didn't quite drive them right, they could sometimes sound a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit false in the bass, as though they, uh, it was almost sort of manufactured in a little bit somehow. Only very, very slightly. It was only the slightest of niggles in certain situations that I sometimes thought, mm, not quite. Um, but then again, they're only small, aren't they? Um, the new version is not at all, no, it's probably to do with that paper driver, just having that extra extra level of naturalness about it. Um, they seem very linear all the way down, they seem, um, I mean they don't, I mean, they're never going to go down as far as in, in the base as sort of a big floor standard does, but they go down far enough for you to, you know, appreciate, you know, double bass, you know, bottom string of a bass guitar and that sort of underpinning sort of bass sound that you get from rock music. They do, they seem to manage all that fine. And I, I do think that they, these manage it better than the originals did and are also more natural than the originals. Not that, they were, not that the originals were, were an unnatural sounding speaker, they weren't really. I mean, they were, they were phenomenal things, but these have just got the edge. I think he's really moved them another step forward. Okay, we've lost a bit of the petiteness about them. I shouldn't say petite, really. But, um, but I don't think that's, considering, you know, it's only like an inch here and an inch there, I don't think, I don't think it's anything too tragic. Interestingly, both the, the Mojo, which is the, the twin driver version, which is a bit taller than this, and the Mambo Mark IIs have all moved on quite a step, particularly the Mambos, actually. I, I mean, the original Mambos I like, but the, the Mambo II is of quite a different design. Because if, if you've ever seen pictures of the original Mambos, they had, what was it, six drivers or four drivers? I can't remember. They had a lot of drivers. This, this tiny little sort of 90 mil driver in a sort of um, stacked array type design. The new version is just two, and there's a, 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 cab, a, a driver hidden within the cabinet as well, interestingly, which is quite, that's quite an interesting design. That's a much bigger sounding version, much more natural sounding version than the originals. So I think he's, he's done it right. He's, he's really improved on them, but with, and has managed not to take any away, anything away from them either. So uh, yeah, really recommended. And like I say, Neat Petite, probably my, one of my favorite small speakers, these, of. If you want to go down in size, this is the way to go, really. Um, I mean, there is the, the neat iota. I feel as though these are slightly more, probably slightly more natural sounding and easier to accommodate. Um, but if you're looking for something a bit quirky, um, the iota's kind of got something as well. There's, there's, the, the, between the two, I think it's probably personal, but I personally really like the Ophidians. I think there's, there's something quite special about them. And I, I think I'm a bit old fashioned. I like the conventionalness of these as well, I think whereas the IO2 is reversed and the little ribbon treble unit on it. I think the, the conventional sort of design of these sort of um, helps me in my old age somehow. Um, Grill-wise, yeah, they've got a little magnetic, which I'll have to do like this, little magnetic grill, which is quite new, quite quite cute. I don't, personally, I prefer them without, and I think they sound better without. But if you if you need, if you've got you know, children in situation, whatever, and you want grills on, they're, they're quite a neat grill. Um, they only come in two finishes. This is the Warner. Um, 
and a light oak, which is kind of similar to the this table, actually. They used to have a bit more choice. I mean, I think there's black, white, light oak, walnut. Probably if you twisted his arm, Gareth would probably make you a black pair. I did have a discussion with him about that, and it was sort of, well, we don't want to, but we probably could. It would cost more, it would take longer. So you'd, you'd, if, if you really, really want black, we can probably sort it out with Gareth, actually. I just have to talk nicely to him. But... Um, because I actually did sell quite a few of the black of the original minimos in black, so I think it probably might still be a market for it, if you're listening, Gareth. So yeah, I'm really impressed with these. I think um, oh yeah, I was going to talk about the, the reasons for this. I mean, again, I think the benefits of some of a small cabinet. That's why they've got this sort of clarity and this sort of 3D imagery thing that they do. Um, the base probably is a lot to do with this clever porting arrangement. It's called, uh, what it's called, it's called, it's called Aeroflex. In fact, <laughs> I'm really good at uh, research, aren't I? Aeroflex, it's like a, basically like, like a sort of damped vent rather than a port. There's very little sort of energy comes out of this. Um, so I get the impression it's sort of like a port that it allows a bit of through flow of air, which makes the driver think it's in a bigger cabinet. But also, because it is damping it quite radically, it's also given quite a bit of back pressure, which helps your power handling and things. But it, it, some, somehow he's balanced it right, that it just seems to cre create a, a really solid sort of energetic bass sound out of something that really shouldn't be able to do it. Um, and if you've ever seen these at, at shows, he, he all, Gareth always seems to be at shows. He's, he's, he's quite good at sort of getting himself out there. Um, Usually, in fact, probably oh, probably most times, I, I would say, um, feedback from customers who've been to the show as well will always say, did you go in the Ophidian room? Wasn't it wonderful? Um, he's always am amongst the top few sounding rooms. So I think, I think at Cranage recently, it was Ophidian, probably um, the Neat room and the Atoll room, strangely. Um, can't think what speakers there. Oh, yeah, they were using um, Westbrook's. Um, but those three rooms were, were superb, and I think they're probably the best at the show, in spite of there being £100,000 systems there and mad valve stuff and things that should, should, have, should have been amazing. Those three rooms were the best. And Ophidian, I get, like I say, always at shows make a fantastic sound, and they always make an impression on people, um, which says a lot, really. I think, um, I think it really does say a lot. So, yeah... Um, what else is it to say? Matching-wise, they, they sort of, because they're quite inefficient, like I say, they've had to drop everything down to keep the base um, sort of consistent with everything else. They're 85 dB. You're struggling a little bit with things like Sugden, probably. Um, although saying that, in a small room, you might get away with it. Um, they rate, they're rated, I, mean, I never go by ratings, because I don't think it, it's such an inconsistent thing. They're rated between 40 and 80 watts for amplifiers. Um, like I said, Sugden's about 23, and if in a small space, you're probably okay with that. I think it's more down to how gutsy the amplifier is, how much grip it has, so more, more current drive, really. I think they need current drive. They seem to need something that keeps the driver doing what it's supposed to, probably to make this porting arrangement work properly. Um, driven correctly, they are astonishing. And that's not me exaggerating in a salesy sort of way. They are astonishing. They really take you by surprise. Um, I mean, my son's got some of the Mark 1s, you know, but I've used them a lot. Um, probably always the first speaker I'd recommend in the small, if you want something really small, if you've got an office and a desk and you've got a computer and all this sort of thing, a pair of these, you know, window, I had a guy put something in, in windowsills with a Riga Brio. Um, there's nothing else really out there that does it, really, that gives you proper audio, big sort of hi-fi, proper hi-fi sound, um, big and dynamic, and all the things you would want from it. From a box that small, there just isn't really. Um, apart from the iota, got to say that because I do like the iotas. So I'm going to end it there. Um, yeah, like I say, love them. I've always loved them, and I'm, I'm really pleased that the, the Mark II hasn't been a backstep or just a, a, a messing around just for the you know to try and get another review. And I know Gareth wouldn't do that, but a lot of the manufacturers out there do do that. They faff about with the the designs of things just to get themselves back into what hi-fi, which is. I can see it. I can see why they do it, because it does get you get another peak in the sales. But you shouldn't really be running companies like that. You should be trying to make them sound great. And if they sound great, word of mouth does it. You don't need the magazines. I'll stop waffling and getting all um, cynical. Um, leave it there. Thanks for watching. Um, I am going to be doing a competition soon. Um, 
negotiations are going on in the background uh, about something. Don't get too excited. Um, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. And I'll see you in a future video. Thank you very much.